It's Monday, April 22nd, 2013. I'm Rim. I'm Scott. And this is Geek Nights. Tonight, we talk about why Google Reader died and RSS is dying. Let's do this. The answer being, because they're so ratchet. You and that ratchet. It's never going away. I'm, I'm digging this. So um, I had the unfortunate experience of causing a homeless man to be pretty severely beaten up. What? Did you beat him up? I did not beat him up. Did you but lie I, and say he did something he didn't do? No, nope, but I... What you do? My, this is crazy. My direct action led to him laying on the ground, screaming in pain, uh, leaving a substantial amount of blood on the ground. Why, how is this even possible? So uh, the reason I'm going to tell this story is it's not really related to technology or anything. I'm just... I'm very conflicted about what happened and whether or not I did the right thing. And when I get to the end of this, I will ask you what you will do if you encounter a similar situation well, going of forward. Well, course, of course, there is the philosophical what would I do and also the you are standing there at that moment, what actually you do. You, True. You but know. now there is the zebra storyteller situation because this, the, for me, it's that. It's that if I encounter a similar situation again, I may act very differently from how I acted this time. Okay. So I uh, left the board, uh, the Nerd NYC night a little early because I wanted to come home and poke at the bunnies and take care of some stuff. So mm -hmm. I go is to Is this Washington. the guy who lays on the vent because it's warm? No, no, no. So okay, I was going like to meet guy. Emily. We're going to go home together. So I walked over to Washington Square Park. While I was waiting, I'm on the phone with my uh, stepdad, just kind of talking, and I hear a commotion. Mm -hmm. So I turn. I would ignore the commotion. Oh, I ignore commotions other than you turn and look to see if it is approaching. Yeah. Because occasionally it is approaching commotion. Mm. So I turn and look, and I see what appears to be an agitated homeless man, which well, is not... Well, I mean, this is a crowded park, right? So you don't, you don't have to be the one to deal with this. Uh, apparently I did, because no one else dealt with it. Really? No one else engaged at all, except the people... But there's plenty of people there. Yeah, so uh, now I'm wondering if next time around, I will be one of those people who just lets it happen. Mm. So I see someone who appears at first glance to be an agitated homeless man, which is not that uncommon in New yeah, York. Yeah, see that all the time. Has kicked over a, some street musician's business oh. and is yelling at him and trying to punch him. Well, you don't know. Obviously, someone trying to punch is, you know, in the wrong, but you don't know. if maybe, exactly. that, maybe that musician did something to that homeless person to taunt them or something. You don't know. So my immediate response is to, uh, Dad, got to call you back. And I'm watching in case whatever goes down to be a witness, because I would really like for someone else to be a witness if I'm ever engaged in one of these crazy of things. Of course, you want to make sure that justice happens. So I'm getting ready to video, but it was, I realized it was too dark, so I just figured I'd watch and pay attention as much as possible mm. while keeping a wide berth. Video is a good idea, though. So it becomes pretty quickly apparent that very likely whatever led up to this, the homeless man is extra agitated and is basically following this guy, trying to legit attack him. Mm. And the guy is what like, what is the guy doing? So the guy is doing that situation of like holding him back, like trying to make him not punch him and trying to push him back and then run away. But the homeless guy keeps following him and attacking him, mm. kicking and punching and flailing. And there's no cops around. No cops. In the park. No one's reacting at all. So some other guy comes over like, yo, man, calm down, like trying to calm the guy down. Mm. So the guy turns and tries to attack him. Mm. So then the first guy walks over to like pick up his kid again, and the homeless guy runs back over to him and hauls back and punches him in the face. Whoa. But on the cheek, but pretty hard. Like I heard it connect. Is the guy out? Uh, so no. So homeless guy's not too strong. At this point, I decide I'm going to call the police because it is obvious no one has called the police. That is a good idea. So I call nine one one. Can't be faulted for calling the police. And I give them and what I consider to be an extremely accurate uh, description of what happened, what I had seen. That's, making, that's very good to give the accurate report making, on the 911 no, call because out, that is on the recording that will be used exactly. in the court of law at some point. I made point. it very clear I did not see the altercation that led up to this, but that right now there is a gentleman who has attacked two people, extremely agitated, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. So the cops are like, okay, I mean, they'll send someone. So they tell me to hang around in the park to direct the police when they arrive. And I just kind of hang out watching this guy continue to menace anyone who comes near him, but no longer going after the guy he punched because that guy basically was like, fuck this, and just ran. Good job. Eventually, over the next few minutes, he kind of calms down, and everyone who he had attacked is no longer in the park. Mm. Gone, completely gone. So he's sitting there, and I'm just kind of watching him from a distance, 
being agitated in that homeless man way, but not doing anything further threatening. And this is when the cops show up. Two cops. A little and, late. Yeah, it takes about five minutes to get there. So the cops beat him up for no reason, basically. So the cops show up, and uh, I'm trying to be very careful to not project my impressions upon this situation, but Mm. the one cop who shows up is pretty young and pretty in that typical looks kind of hardcore and asks me to point the gentleman out and then basically starts putting words in my mouth to me and like, so how many people did he attack? Was he violent? He's armed, right? And I'm like, no, he's not armed. He punched one person. Uh, he interacted with two people. And the guy's like, so he punched s- several people. And he's really, really trying to get me. I would have asked for his, I would have taken a picture of his badge and then reported him to the police complaint so thing. So finally, I get over, and basically the homeless guy. And I guy, recorded the cop. So the homeless guy's being real kind of weird and agitated in the corner. So I'm like, that's the guy. So the cops then approach him in a very professional manner, shine the light on him, start asking him questions. And he starts acting crazy. Uh, how crazy did he get? Did he so attack the cops first? He stands first? up and starts dancing around, going hoodly, 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 hoodly. Did he attack the cops? Or did he just go hoodly, hoodly? At that point, he didn't attack the cops. He was going hoodly, 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 hoodly. Okay. So the cop says, "Get on the ground. You're under arrest for being hoodly." Uh, he's gonna arrest him for the assault and all that, I guess. I, I guess. Don't know. I mean, he's uh, yeah, he's allowed to do that. Sure. I mean, the guy's crazy, so yeah. the cops like want to go over, and then as soon as the cops approach, he starts arm flailing. Okay. So then they pepper spray him and drill him the fuck into the ground and might have broken his nose, definitely busted his lips, blood everywhere. Oh, well, it wasn't like a Rodney King situation. No, no, they no. weren't like kicking him on the ground or whacking no. him with sticks. Well, they the guy had the stick out and was ready to hit him with the stick. Yeah, but he didn't he did he like wail on him with it? No, but he pepper sprayed him and basically face planted him into the ground pretty hard. Blood everywhere. No, oh, that's that's sort of what cops do. And then held him there for like fifteen minutes because it took that long for an ambulance or anyone to come while the guy's just laying there screaming in pain, yelling stuff, getting kind of agitated and crazy, but mostly pathetic. Then a crowd shows up. So the cops scream at everyone, get back, get back, get back. And everyone's like, dude, give the man some water. And this crazy situation happens. Yeah. Now, the reason I'm conflicted is that they've arrested this guy. He was bloodied. Probably belonged in a nut house, this guy. Yes. He'll probably end up in a psych ward somewhere. However, at the same time, while this guy obviously needs some psych ward help, I'm not confident that's what he's going to get out of this situation. <laughs> well, who knows what he's going to get? I guess he'll get what every other crazy homeless guy gets these days. Yeah, but the level of immediate escalation of the cops, coupled with the fact that while he attacked two people, he attacked two people in that sort of, I'm a crazily homeless guy, being crazy, and once the people he had attacked were gone... And they didn't seem interested in calling the police or doing anything. He went back to sitting in the corner kind of shuffling around being crazy. I don't know if he's better off just letting him be or letting the police do what they did to him because I don't know if he's going to get any treatment. I don't know. The police felt it was worth their time to check him out, but they don't feel feel it's worth their time to check out bike thieves. Yep. Well, they checked him out because I called the police. And then they wanted me to stay. And this is where it got kind of weird. They made me stay. And they wanted me to give a statement. They took, like, all my information. Well, you gave probably a really good statement. Uh, yeah, they didn't have any fucking paper. <laughs> they didn't have notepads. You didn't record the statement audio-wise? I didn't have a good way to do that because the park's kind of loud. At this point, there's a crowd yelling at the cops. So they kept trying to take my statement. Of the four cops there, not one of them has a piece of paper. They have laptops in the car. Or pencil. Uh, they apparently can't take statements that way. Okay. So eventually, and they kept, every cop I talked to was trying to put words into my mouth, trying to get me to say that he did way more than he did. Mm. And I held the line pretty hard. Yeah. So luckily, I gave a pretty accurate statement to 911 that's recorded. So that's I'm right. hoping that... I just, I feel like if I see a homeless man in an altercation like this, I'm just going to ignore it or watch it, but not call the police next time. Mm-hmm. One time that I, I think I've told the story on the show that was a long time ago. Oh, when you restrained that crazy lady? Exactly. They started restraining the crazy lady, right? It was basically I was on a subway and a crazy lady starts attacking some girl who's much younger and less crazy who's just trying to go to work, right? And the girl is just like walking away, ignoring, and the crazy lady's all going like. Rrr, rrr, rrr. So I just restrained the crazy lady for like 
10 seconds and the girl was then out of sight and I let the crazy lady go and I went to work. Putting yourself at substantial risk of liability, but also probably the right thing to do. Well, yeah. And then, you know, I didn't do anything beyond that. And then some guy came up to me and he was like, oh man, you're crazy. What if she had a knife? And I'm like, that crazy lady didn't have a knife or she would have already used it on that girl. Yep. And then he's like, you know, I'm like, and if I get stabbed by a crazy lady, I don't have to go to work. But I feel like in this situation, like I made it pretty clear that this guy is just crazy, but not directly dangerous. Mm. And it was obvious to anyone watching that this guy, while he was all woodly, 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 was not a danger to the young, well-armed, fit group of four police officers surrounding him. Mm. So I feel like some sort of government official, or there should be a special cop whose job is to... You mean the internal affairs department? No, someone who, instead of going straight for the pepper spray... When there's the crazy homeless guy, the guy who walks over and be like, hey, man, let's chat. <laughs> Instead of, hey, man, I'm holding a nightstick and pepper spray and shining a light in your face and yelling at you. Anyway, that was my night. I when, feel When you got a hammer, everything looks like nails. Simultaneously, biking home from the botanical garden yesterday, we saw the, the results of a bike accident where a car pretty clearly just drilled some biker, and he was on the ground, pretty hurt, and they were waiting Did for the police Did it look like everything. the biker was running the red light? It looks like the guy in the car was pretty much at fault. But I didn't see it, can't, can't say. Yeah. But I, this is why I'm inspired to bring this anecdote up. I feel like whenever there is a situation... And, when, and you know what I mean by a situation. The world has no justice. We know this. Whenever there's a situation, I feel like the best thing you can ever do as a person is not necessarily to call the police, definitely not necessarily to intervene, but to video, record, and remember to the best of your ability what actually happened and stick around to be able to give the actual, basically be willing to be the witness for the dude who got hit by the car so the guy who hit him actually does go to jail. Like, actually go to court and try to get yourself to be a witness. If you want justice, you have to take it in your own hands because there isn't going to come justice from anywhere else. Yep, and not to bring up the whole Boston thing. Except but for that judge who contempted himself. Good job, judge. Yeah, uh, props to him. $25 fine on himself Yeah, for cell phone going off in the court. But the fact that the Boston thing also kind of got resolved so quickly because so many people had so much video and took so much record of the thing going on, it's real important. And in New York City, at least, the guy who was hit by the car... There was some other biker who had obviously witnessed it, who, st who was sticking around. He was taking pictures of the car, of the driver of the car, the license plate, the accident. He was, like, sticking around. He was, like, his, like he's one of those biker guys who's like, I'm going to make sure that justice happens. Yeah, if I go on Reddit R Bicycles or Reddit R New York, I might see that. You might see that. <laughs> All right. It was right at the intersection, like, under where the seven, like, on the way to the Pulaski Bridge. Like, right there. Mm -hmm. You know where that is. All right. Anyway, that killed about 12 minutes. Nice. My only opening bit is that all last night when I was sleeping, my whole arm fell asleep. Ah. I was sort of half asleep. That's why I sleep on my back. If I sleep on and my side, my arm definitely will fall asleep. All day today, my thumb has been... Eh. Probably pinched a nerve while you were asleep. It's slight, starting to come back a little bit now, but... You know, drunk people, if they're super drunk and they pass out or fall asleep in a weird way, can cause permanent nerve damage by laying on a limb, like, all night. Another reason not to get drunk. Yeah? Well, you gotta be pretty, pretty fucking drunk for that to happen. <laughs> Okay, so news time. So, uh, to follow up on our Thursday episode about uh, drugs, right? There's this interesting story going around about the psychological side effects of Tylenol. Huh. Yeah, apparently acetaminophen has, you know, psychological side effects, right? They're not, like, immediate or obvious or severe, and it's like you don't get addicted to it, and it doesn't kill you, right? So it's like you don't really notice, even though these things exist. But they Well, what's the, what do they define? I mean... Blocking pain receptors, does that count or something more substantial? Right. So apparently, um, you know, not only does Tylenol ease pain of, you know, physical pain, it also apparently eases psychological pain, such as existential dread or anxiety. Really? Yeah. It's, and, you know, you can read all these details about it, but it's, uh, it's pretty fascinating. So... It says here, we think that Tylenol is blocking existential unease in the same way it prevents pain because a similar neurological process is responsible for both types of distress. You know, it's interesting because dread like that is a clinical symptom of many different specific disorders. Like it is one of a list of things. Like if you have the list of these things and dread is one of them, you might have this disease. Yep. But it's also interesting. I saw some discussion online. I don't know how randy or not this is, but nah. they're, they're talking about some other alternative thing that's not ibuprofen, right? It's, it's some other, 
you know, alternative to acetaminophen that's apparently way poisonous if you take too much, but otherwise is less liver damaging. And I guess other countries you can get it, but not here. What is it? I forget what it's called. Great. I probably shouldn't even mention it. That's some journalism. Probably shouldn't even mention it. I heard about this thing that (laughs) I don't have any citations for, nor do I remember the name of it. Right. Should have just skipped that. I'm going to bring it up on this news uh, portion <laughs> of a broadcast out of nowhere. <laughs> I don't know. Scott, Go look at comments. Scott, that on- is the very definition of ratchet. Sure. Anyway. <laughs> so I'm not going to talk about CISPA passing the house, except that I'm, I'm done with technological law bullshit. Uh, burn bridges at this point. Anyone who voted for that, I will never vote for again. If my Surprisingly, representative- my representative did not. I didn't they check mine in the yet. Nay column because it's, it's not same, election it's the same time person yet. Rim. All right, because we're kind of well. The thing is, the lines are pretty close. It's the same person. We're represented by this area, but we're also like in our the, same district. In the is federal like house, part of in the, we're in, we have different people for different things, but in the federal house, we have the same person. I think it's Carolyn Maloney. Yeah. So uh, look at this list and the people who voted yes, with the exception of Harry Reid, because he had to change his vote to yes for procedural reasons. He didn't vote for it because he wanted to. Uh, How does that even happen? Uh, well, so any law, I don't know if it was Harry Reid in this case, but it's because that Senate has a similar procedure. If you're a sponsor of a bill and there's other situations and it is being voted on, there are situations where if you want to bring it up again later, you have to be someone who voted against it. Mm. So there are people who will vote for or against something and then have to flip their vote before it's counted to be able to do something else later. It Ugh. usually happens in the Senate. That's ridiculous. But I read that someone did something similar in this vote in the House. I'll have to look up who it was and why. Mm. But, uh, yeah, if you vote for bad technology things, I don't care how, what your other stances are. I will just never vote for you again, ever. And make that the primary issue above all the other issues? Well, it doesn't mean I'll vote for the stupid Republican. It just means I won't vote in that vote, whatever it is. No, you just abstain? Yeah, I'll okay. just abstain. Abstaining is okay. I, on tech, tech issues, I'm done with this. Mm. There's, there's no way I can vote for someone who doesn't understand this stuff. And this was pretty bad legislation. It's not good, right? But it's not as bad as SOPA in that it doesn't break the internet. It just violates everybody's you yep. know, rights. It's Well, the thing is, nothing has ever come as close to as bad as the CBD TPA. Yeah, it's true. So, And we beat that one. But you know people are just chopping to the bit to bring it back. Yeah. The thing is, at least, you know, if CISPA passes, it's like it won't really affect me personally that much because I hang everything out there anyway. It's like, yeah, check me out. I'm not hiding anything. Yeah, but, but in principle. If, in principle, it's very wrong. 19. 19- Wrong. Well, here's the crazy thing. I am for some of the ideas of CISPA. I just think CISPA is shittily written and dangerous. Well, that's also true. But I mean, but I'm I mean, for... in that case, we have a lot of already shittily written and dangerous laws that have already passed. Yep. But people get me wrong, and a lot of technologists wrong, and a lot of these things. We're totally okay with crazy technological surveillance. We're just not okay with people getting the the right to do that in the government. Without a warrant. <laughs> That's right. If you get a warrant, like a judge is like, yes, this is okay. I give you like almost carte blanche to spy on someone for the extent of that warrant. That's right. The problem is we have a system for warrants. Why do why do all these tech laws try to get around that and say, oh, well, you don't need to warrant to follow someone's GPS coordinates with their cell phone because... Bleh. Well, it's basically what it is, is police just want their job to be easier and their job is getting, you know, at least harder, either because A, they are not, you know, hip with the world, you know, B, because of laws, you know, I basically make it, you know, it'd be easy for me to do detective work than a detective because of so many limitations on the things they're allowed to do. Yeah, I want right? your job to be really hard to be easy. It should be hard to get the right to do those things easily, but it should be easy to do those things once you need to do them. But you need to get enough information in the first place to get a warrant, which is not easy. I don't know. It it's, should, you think it's, it's pretty easy to get warrants. I guess they're just lazy because it means you have to do some paper. I don't know. I don't know. I think it, I think the people sponsoring this bill have ulterior motives. I don't know what they're thinking. Whatever. So uh, here's an issue. This is my news. It's baseball, which you think would be Tuesday or maybe <laughs> Thursday, but it's on Monday because one issue in technology that no one who listens to Geek Nights, unless you work in like SAP or like medical stuff, will know anything about or care about. But it's a big part of why technology sucks. Coding data is such a thorny problem that no one has solved well. Like in medical records, how do you encode a doctor's report of someone? 
Like, how do you encode, I checked out their left elbow, it's fine, the right elbow had a lump on it. How do you put that data in a way that is searchable without resorting to Google, like, well, let's search for ankle or elbow, just in case, and that's lump the, that's or the answer. bump or bumpies. Free, free text input. <laughs> yeah, and, it's not the answer. Yeah, that's all you can really do, because doctors, all they do is scribble, not even in between uh, the lines. Actually, Scott, we have, there's, there's really defined ways of coding this stuff, but I want to use an example from baseball. Because something crazy happened recently in a baseball game. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to paraphrase from Slashdot. So Sigura of the Milwaukee Brewers. Okay. I don't know any of these players. I don't follow baseball for shit. You're so, probably saying his name wrong. Yeah, Segura. Jean Jean Segura. All right. Of the Milwaukee Brewers. Stole second base. Now we have a way in the software where we do the box score for baseball to encode that someone attempted to steal second or succeeded in stealing second. Yep. And people who care about sports care a lot about the accuracy of those ridiculous stats. How many times did this guy swing at a ball? How many times did he touch the ball with the bat? Mm -hmm. Things like that. All right, so far so good. There was a way in the software that official MLB uses to code that. Then he tried to steal third. Mm -hmm. He failed. He did it too early, but he made it back to second base before being tagged. Okay, that's he's safe at second. But his teammate Ryan Braun had already made it to second base while he was on his way to third, having stolen that's second. That's pretty bad because they're going to both be out at the same base. Um, so after tags were applied to both base runners, Segura started running, trotting back to the dugout, but then he realized that it hadn't the play hadn't been completed. He wasn't yet officially out. He was. He got tagged. So Braun's only option was to try to make it back to first. But there wasn't Braun also tagged? No, no. So Segura was trotting back to the dugout, didn't realize that Braun wasn't out. Braun oh, they didn't both tries get to run all the way back to first. And I believe, let's see. Why he, didn't he just stay at second? I don't know. Probably because I need to draw this to figure out what happened. Basically, <laughs> guy from first steals second, guy from second steals third, doesn't make it to third, has to go back to second, but his friend's at second, so his friends run backwards to first. But if the guy who was running back to second became out from tagging, the guy could have just who stole second could have just stayed there. So I guess you want me to read the full thing then, Captain Baseball? I'm just saying it doesn't make a lot of sense. All right, all right. So we're going to have to read the whole thing because I can't draw it on a podcast. <laughs> Guy stole second. He then tries to steal third, doesn't make it, ends up running back to first base. What? Then he got thrown out trying to steal second again over the course of five pitches. Okay. There is no Sounds way. Sounds like bad base running to me. Uh, there, the problem is it was all perfectly legitimate and legal play. I'm sure whatever happened on the field, the umpires made it legit. Right? And there is no possible way to encode that in any of the software used to track box scores. No, because there's a certain way you keep score in baseball. I've done it before. Live, pretty much every, when you go to a baseball game, that's what you do. You get the program, and the program comes with a scorecard, and you keep score in each little box. You write down, you know, there's numbers for what happened. Okay, here's a much better the summary. On a 2-2 pitch... Ryan Braun, in the eighth inning, blah, 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 stole second base. On the next pitch, Braun walked. So far, pretty good. Mm. Three pitches after that, Segura broke for third, but his first mistake was that he forgot to wait until the pitcher had actually delivered the ball, so he effectively was stealing. Uh. Camp, I don't know the names of his players, whirled and got Segura hung up between second and third base. Mm -hmm. That led Braun to follow baseball want to run protocol and try to steal second base, mm. which was proper and cool until Segura ran back to second base. Mm. The Cubs started tagging everyone in the vicinity. The rules say it was Braun who was out, but that was, but Segura thought he was the one who was out. So he started walking toward the dugout along the way. He was told he wasn't actually technically out yet. So he ran back to first base. The first base coach then told him not to leave. Two pitches later, he ran towards second to try to steal it and was thrown out. And the sum of that is impossible to code. Oh, uh, so Segura, who was on the way to third, went back to first because Braun was out in the when there the were two people is, in second. The moral is, if you want to get a job that won't pay much and will be boring as hell, 
but will solve the majority of problems we see in the healthcare industry. Do a job that comes down to figuring out how to encode crazy bullshit like this in technology. Well, there's already, all every sport basically already has like one piece of software that people that they use to keep score. And like this piece of program, I mean, I know a guy who used it uh, to like score college basketball games and things. You basically, as the game is going, you basically type in with these keyboard shortcuts that are unique to that program everything that's happening. And it has all the rosters and everything, and it sends all the data, every, you know, to everyone who needs it. That's how come you can go to ESPN and find like the score of the RIT hockey game because some guy at the RIT hockey game has this program and is typing in what's going on with the keyboard shortcuts. And these programs are horribly bad, but one guy wrote it at some point, and it becomes the standard for that sport, and everyone uses it everywhere. And that's it. And it's really hard to dislodge it. The end. All right, I found a really, really detailed article of what happened. I'm going to link to that. You can read it yourself. To figure out what actually happened. I'm just going to watch a fucking YouTube video. I think I understand it now, but without diagrams and video, it's almost impossible to follow this. I'm just going to watch a video. From what I can tell, this never happened before. <laughs> I don't think it has, no. But anyway, things of the day. Found this video. It's a music video. It looks like it's from Russia. It's from a band called Little Big, and I found a bunch more videos <laughs> with the same guy. Seems to be a sort of comedy duo. That's your favorite kind of guy. That's like a guy who's going to be on Eurovision. Yeah, it's like comedy duo slash musicians. And it's him and two midgets. And you can see all their videos. They're great. But this one is some pretty apt commentary about the uh, prospects for the youth and Russia in the future of Russia. Drinking vodka all day? The title is Every Day I'm Drinking. And the chorus is basically Every Day I'm Drinking. Because there's no future. And that's it. Okay. With midgets, bears, vodka, and a dude who's really confused at the end. This is... I've never heard of anything more Russian. It's also got this pretty great sort of interesting vibe where a lot of the images in the video are sort of parodies of famous paintings of Russian high society. Mm. Like, you'll see, there's a point where the midget girl's standing in a dress, and she's pulling behind her this sort of, like, little stylized horse on some wheels there's a famous painting i know that painting. Some, yeah that painting so all every like set piece scene in this is a parody of some painting like that mm. it's great it'll get stuck in your head it's a really simple song and there's a scary fucking clown <laughs> okay so in uh, 1978 there was or 77. An, no, in 78, there was an F1 car called Le Ligier Matra. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. It was a V12. This video of it was taken off of YouTube, but now it's back on YouTube. Yay! This car, I've never actually seen this car before recently. This is probably the most amazing F1 car I've ever seen. Like, you watch this video, and number one, it sounds like... Exactly. It's it's it, like the most stereotypical race car sound. It's just like this unbelievable, you know, like F1 cars here, like mm -hmm. this thing is like, it, it's unbelievable. And then two, the way the video is shot, it looks like pole position. Like if this was the only way you ever saw racing, you would think that pole position was the perfect racing simulator after watching this video. I think, you know, pole position was made around shortly after this, right? Like the early 80s, right? So... It's not a surprise that the pole position would look, you know, the way this video looks. It's, uh, it makes me want to see if, you know, someone has to have one of these cars still around somewhere. I want to go see, like, you know, a video, a modern video of pole one position of was released in 1982. Yeah, so it's oh, this is four years before pole position. So I want to see, like, you know, this car still has to exist somewhere, even though they don't use it in F1 anymore, right? Someone has one in their garage, some car collecting guy, some, some auto show or some, you know, classic car, you know, day at the track. I want to see, like, a modern video of this old car driving, if I can find one. All right. In the metamon, very briefly, we will be at PAX Australia. Oi. It's official. It's done. We're doing it. We are presenting at least one lecture. We are doing a brand new, rewritten, updated, awesome, beyond Dungeons and Dragons. To represent all the indie RPG people who won't go to Australia. Yep. Friday, July 19th in Melbourne at 1 p.m. It's in Melbourne. The Wombat Theater. <laughs> so we now know the Is name that the sound of, makes? of at least one of the theaters at PAX Australia. Mm. We're going to be at PAX Dev, hopefully, PAX Prime. Do they have Wombats in Australia? Kineticon, Anime Boston. We're doing five panels in Anime Boston. Whoa, at least that'll take some time. Yep. The book club book is Player of Games by... 
Ian M. Banks. I've been reading a lot more of it. I'm getting, I'm getting the exciting parts. It might be raining the rest of the week, and I'll start reading it again, but I've been biking to work every day, so. It's too cold. I also realized recently we have done 22 panels and lectures at PAX's since 2008. Okay. That's a lot. Yep. Uh, YouTube channels, all our shit's up there. Mine and Scott's. Sure. So, yeah. RSS, dead. Dying. Dying dead. It's not... I think it's exactly where it's always been, right? Um, Nerds know they're using it. Other people use it by accident, but very few people use it on purpose anymore. Well, very few people ever used it on purpose to begin with. Yep, but I think the number actually dropped. But basically, this whole conversation came out of the fact that Google announced they were killing Google Reader, which... Well, that's their philosophy now, right? Is more wood behind fewer arrows. So Google Reader is not that popular it's got this sort of you know small rel- you know not super small well, this but is what i'm saying if you, a very if you, vocal very passionate but relatively small user base compared you look to other at the google internet, products according to the internet google reader is the most used software in the history of the world and google is killing the most popular and and yeah. best cash cow they could have it's ever had. It's heavily used by heavy internet users and not at all even known by general people. Wait, so it's got like Daft Punk music and... <laughs> 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 so they're killing it and people are like, why? Why are they killing it? Well, first of all, the major problem is that there's not really any good alternatives, right? All the other RSS readers sort of died. Wait, wait, wait. Now that actually answers our question in a little way. Uh... There's more than one web browser yep. because a lot of people use web browsers. Mm. Name a thing there's well, only one of where that thing is popular. Um, mm. Because if something's popular, there's at least going to be one knockoff. There's monopolies on things. Uh, name one. Zippers. Uh, there are other companies that make zippers. They're just crooked slightly so. There's very few of them. Also, zippers, much like RSS, most people don't think about them that much or care about them. <laughs> and there are people who try to... Velcro competes with zippers. <laughs> Pretty effectively in some cases. <laughs> what? So do shoelaces. Yeah, actually. Buttons, hooks, <laughs> key and hook. I like the key and hook model sometimes. Okay. Though, but if you wear a button fly, you're a terrible person. That is the worst industrial design in the modern world. Because you got to pee. That's 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 dangerous. <laughs> what if it's a fake? What if it's a snap button fly? Just rip. That's like wearing a fake tie, like okay. a clip-on tie. It can work. It can work. No one will know. <laughs> but anyway, think about that, guys. If if Google Reader and RSS are so important to the internet and so popular. Why hasn't someone made a super awesome or even just a knockoff of Google Reader and charged like 50 cents for it? Well, I think this Feedly is out there, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but accordingly, if you listen to the Google Reader people, it's not good enough. It's not even close. Right. Well, here's the whole thing. What is RSS originally all about? It was all about syndicating content so that one person could customize and make their own content aggregator by combining content from a bunch of different websites mostly blogs originally but now also any other site that has you know items of, you know of content you know individual items look at them all in one place without having to actually visit those individual places uh, ho, ho, ho. and consume a lot of content very very quickly and easily you said a bunch of keywords that tell everyone why there's not a lot of industry support for RSS, especially right. content in RSS. People who make content for money and have ads don't want you to do this. You already said aggregator. Everyone who isn't Google hates Google News if they have news. Because Google News, people don't even click through to read the news articles. Google News in I the do. summary, not many people do. <laughs> and Google News won't link to places that have paywalls or anything in the way. So Google News is basically funneling people toward free sources of the news that they'd rather you pay for. And a lot of people, like, I don't click on every news. I go to Google News. I read the headlines to know the facts and things that are happening. But then I only click on, like, one article when I want to go in depth. That's true. So all those other people feel like Google is stealing revenue from them because I didn't click through and see the ad. There's no way they would let Google show the entire article in Google <laughs> News. 
So aggregators are bad for people who care about that business model and make content that they don't want aggregated. So the people who make the content have an incentive to not have RSS in the first place. I mean, do you ever wonder why Penny Arcade, pretty much the most popular webcomic in the history of webcomics, doesn't have the comic itself in the RSS feed? I thought they did. They didn't for the longest time. People complained about it. I think they it. do. They might now because of that Kickstarter. I think Robert Koo even, I'm not sure if he said this, but I seem to remember he was he didn't really care about people like putting the comics up all over the internet. He just didn't want you to hot link and use all their bandwidth. He was like, use Imgur, guys. Come on. Yeah, but uh, there was a time where the comic was definitely not in the RSS feed. And almost every webcomic I click through in RSS feeds right now, as I've been clicking through recently, do not have the actual comics in the RSS feed. Some of that is technological incompetence. Some they tell you is... the comic is there, but the link is to the site with the ad banners that has the comic. Mm. Which isn't great when I'm like on the subway and I have my RSS reader and I want to just read all my web comics. Nope, got to be online. Nope. The other thing is that big content houses really want to track, you know, you reading content and they do a lot of things. You know, to, to put cookies on you that they make money from and also and right and if you're just getting stuff from the RSS feed, none of that stuff works. You know, they can't really put ads in RSS effectively. There's no way for them to make any money off of you. RSS is great design in the sense that I as a person using the internet want data. I just want the pipe of the data I want formatted for me, but a lot of data that's on the internet I don't care about. I don't want to see your ad. I just want to see your funny image. So I want to display just the image and not the ad, but they don't like that. The other thing is that so few people actually use the RSS, right, that uh, you don't lose a lot of readers if you get rid of it. Exactly, because if, the, if say, there was an RSS feed that had the full comments, well, I guess you couldn't have the comments, but, like, the summaries and everything of Slashdot, and I used it. If that RSS feed went away, I'd probably just start going to Slashdot again. Yeah, right? Yeah. But I don't use RSS anyway because most of the sites I go to don't have enough content in the RSS feeds to make it worth it. So the only place I use RSS is podcasts, which are, are also completely plateaued and not well known or popular, except among, again, the kinds of people who use Google Reader. I think there are a few podcasts that are, you know, sort of, you know, growing. Like a lot of the NPR stuff, like just tons and tons of people there are just are, all over that shit. But a lot of those people just. Go to the, they go to the website and then they click on the player and listen while they're at work. That could be, yeah. Or they use iTunes to listen. Yep. And they don't know they're using RSS. They don't care. Well, they actually, don't... iTunes is using the RSS and then their iTunes exactly. is using iTunes. But they don't care that it's RSS. Doesn't have to be RSS. Well, that's iTunes... the best RSS is the one you don't see, right? It's exactly. completely invisible. But the RSS that's invisible is the also the RSS that lets people consume your content without ever going to your site. Right. Well, I mean, look, Firefox, when RSS was, you know, bigger, they added like, you know, that built in RSS. You would visit a website. If it had an RSS, the orange icon would appear. They tried to push that orange icon everywhere. And Firefox got rid of that orange icon because no one really clicked on it. And it was cluttering up the interface. Yeah. So the problem is just that th there is technology like RSS that is great for users, but bad for people who have control over and say on industries. As a result, there's no industry support or lacks industry support for those protocols. Usually, eventually, proprietary protocols that are a little more locked down come in and compete with them. And the only people who get mad are super internet people. Mm. I mean, I ran into this problem five years ago and stopped using RSS feeds because I couldn't get the data I wanted in the RSS feeds. And I had the separate kind of side problem with aggregators. If you use RSS to subscribe to content, if I subscribe to, an, to more than one aggregator, I, there is so much duplicated content yep. pretty much immediately that RSS becomes useless. I'd rather just go to the best aggregator. Exactly. It's like if you, subs you, know, you want to get tech news, right? So let's say you get, the, you get Engadget, you get Gizmodo, you get Slashdot, you get Ars Technica, you get I don't know who else, right? Maybe, maybe you get some subreddits about technology. You put them all together. You know what you're going to see? You're going to see the same story, like you know the same CISPA story like 10 times. Yep. It's like, that's not helpful. I want to see the one CISPA story. The one, I want to see every individual thing once and only once with no things missing. And that is not a solved problem. Not even Google solved that problem. Now, so my answer is to choose the best aggregator and use it. Yeah. Now, if Google had decided to, instead of kill Google Reader, enhance it by adding those kinds of features and things, 
you know, where it would find, it would take, you know, of all your feeds, it would be able to detect similar stories using the same thing it does with Google News to detect similar stories and clump them together. Then it would have been amazing. So here's the question. Why didn't Google do that? Because they don't make any money from Google Reader. <laughs> yep. And <laughs> at best, the best case scenario for Google Reader, if it doesn't piss off advertisers and content producers and they get a way to put the ads in line in such a way that it works is that they have the same ad revenue they had before and had to do a whole bunch of work to get to that point. Mm -hmm. As opposed to let it die and also have the same ad revenue. That's pretty much it. But it's interesting that you know a lot of people say, oh, the open source movement, open source software, make your own. It's interesting that no one's really making one that looks like it's going to replace Google Reader. Right, I mean, there's tons of them out there. They're just not good. And the and people this who complain the, the most point, are not the people who are going to write them. Yeah, the whole point of RSS is to increase efficiency. But to increase efficiency, you need an excellent user interface that has to be like perfect and amazing. You know, for something that someone's going to use all day and funnel all their internet through, that's a heavy use program. It's got to be. I got one. It's called it a web has, browser. It has to be terrific. And it's so far, no one's really made one that's better than open up a bunch of websites and tabs and scroll down them. Right. So. It's not a bad way to go, though. <laughs> it's not. It's pretty efficient. Um, so it's really hard to beat that level of efficiency, you know, the way Google Reader did. You know, there was kind of a side thing I noticed that when I first started using Google Reader way back, it was great because it would queue up like all these things to look at. And I'd know when I looked at them. But even only subscribing to a small amount of things, Reader's queue was faster than I was willing to consume the data. Mm -hmm. And no software, email, nothing to date has a good way to drop things off your queue that you probably weren't ever going to actually look at. How is it supposed to know? Get an AI agent? Uh, basically, what Give you do... Give it some years. Give it some years. No, actually, it's pretty easy to do. I, I deal with this problem in the financial industry all the time. It's the simplest way to do it that works well in like 90% of use cases is to have data expire. So something new hits your RSS reader, it's there. If, if it's still in your queue after three days, it just disappears if there is more stuff in your queue to replace it. So fresh news over about, say, three days is replacing news you didn't look at. Mm. So if you, if you don't look at it for a week and then you look at it, you only see the fresh stuff. Now, here's, a, here's right. See, there's a whole bunch of weird special cases. This is why this shit is hard and it's not easy, right? Uh, let's say you subscribe to a whole bunch of stuff. You subscribe to, like, Engadgets and slash dots, but you also subscribe to, like, Obscure Blog or Webcomic that updates once. Ah, that's a separate... You know, your Prior Bible Fellowship is in there, right? Uh, Scott, QOS handles that. Pr priority right. tiers. You don't want a, pe a Perry Bible Fellowship to expire, right? That's going to be... It gets so in there when you're on vacation. Tiers. And then... You set it up to where... Like, here's... In the financial world, here's the situation. Here's the same situation. A legit example. You send the 35 equals D. That's a new order. 35 equals F, cancel some fucking order. Mm -hmm. Let's say you're trading on some exchange somewhere that, can only, that will only accept 20 order affecting messages per second from you mm -hmm. because that's, that's how they limit you. You can only send 20 orders and or cancels per second. Let's say I have a routing engine or something that's taking in all my orders and sending them to the exchange. Let's say... Uh, I know I'm about to send that 21st order. Do I reject it back to whatever sent it? Do I hold it and then send it when the rate gets under a threshold? Do I, how long do I hold it? If I hold onto it for 20 milliseconds and then send it because it was just a burst, that's probably fine. If I hold onto it for 20 seconds, it's probably bad news. Mm -hmm. Let's say I'm, I'm at my threshold and I'm queuing up some orders. But I'm still sending through. At what point do I want to send through fresh orders and reject old orders that I couldn't send in time? Do I want to prioritize cancels over new orders? You can see how even in a simple thing with there are just two cases, an order and a cancel and a raid, the edge cases, I could spend a week. I did spend a week specking out the use cases. <laughs> okay. So... Something so much more complex and subjective than just, this is an order, this is a cancel. How the hell do you satisfy even 80% of the people? I don't know. If I knew, I'd already be doing it. But really, that's why RSS, and yes, it is dying. You guys say it isn't, but at best, it has plateaued for the last five years. It's not commonly used. It's going to have a decreasing user base over time. 
Much like how Futurama was canceled because no one cares about it anymore. And yes, it was canceled. There's no more seasons coming. RSS readers, nothing that comes out to replace Google Reader will satisfy you. The use cases are too complex. It's too monumental of a project to make something that will satisfy 80% of users. And the content producers don't want one, so they're not going to help you. Uh, the aggregators don't want one. They're not going to help you. The, no industry is going to help you. So you, open source dude, have to make it on your own for no money. And it's impossible for you to satisfy 80% of people. So nothing will get critical mass. And you'll have a declining user base even if you do a really good job. That's why for the foreseeable future, RSS is dying. This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night.